Donald was finding his work on the Fat Controller's Railway difficult. Douglas had recently gone to the works due to a broken tender coupling. Donald had secretly hoped it would be the last time that happened. Not only that, but Donald hadn't seen his duck dilly for almost two months due to the hard work he was being put through. He was just wondering if it was okay to see Dilly at her pond near Tidmouth when a surprising sight came his way. As Donald came to the level crossing, a lorry stood before him. It had broken down and its back wheel had been removed due to the heavy load of flour it was carrying. This seemed to be the last straw for Donald. Yal miserable muckle nuisance, he scolded. I can't believe a fat controller bought three good-for-nothing work stealers to terrorize our island and make our lives a living misery. The lorry just whimpered and moaned for Butch the breakdown vehicle to come and tow it away sooner than later. Because being yelled at by a very angry Donald had been the last thing on the lorry's mind. A little later, a tired and deflated Donald pulled into the yard, late and miserable. Are you all right? asked Duck. You haven't been yourself for the last few days. It's this hard work and the absence of Dougie, answered Donald. I try to work as hard as I can, and I'm trying as well to make the fat controller proud. But I feel like I need a change of scenery, and I haven't seen Dilly for as long as I can remember. Duck smiled. He completely understood. I'll tell you what, he said. I'll speak to the fat controller. I'm sure he can ask a few of us to do some of your work. What you need is a holiday. I can't take work off, he cried. Engines don't just go gallivanting off on holiday. They will when the fat controller understands their situation, replied Duck. Let me talk to him and we'll see what happens. Donald wasn't sure if the fat controller would let him have time off as he took his trucks away to the chute. A few weeks later, the Fat Controller had some good news. Edward, Oliver, Boko and Duck had offered their services to do Donald's work while he was allowed to go to the fishing village of Norrenby. To make it even more wonderful, Donald was allowed to take Dilly with him, as she also wanted to see more of the island instead of her pond at Tidmouth. Donald wasted no time in collecting his duck and setting off for Norby at once. This is a nice change, Donald smiled as the harbour came into view. I wish Dougie was here to see this. As Donald puffed along, Dilly was interested by the new sights and surroundings. Before Donald realised what had happened, she had flapped out his cab. Dilly! Come back! shouted Donald. But the duck had already disappeared. Ah, buffers! muttered Donald. Ah, well, at least Dilly can look around as much as I can. And Donald went to check out the harbour, hoping Dilly would be safe. Nearby, Bertie the bus had brought some children on a school trip. They saw Dilly. She was flapping and quacking, even dancing around and moving her webbed feet as if she was doing some kind of can-can. The children clapped and cheered, and even Bertie was impressed. Dilly then squawked a couple of times and flapped away from the stand. I never thought I'd live to see the day, chuckled Bertie. Over at the loading dock, Thomas was annoyed. The fat controller had asked him to collect some vans and have them loaded with fish for Henry's flying kipper. I wish someone else was doing this job instead of me, grumbled Thomas. It's just not fair. The fat controller knows I don't like fish. Thomas's thoughts were then interrupted by the sound of fluttering. His driver heard it too, and when he walked round to the front of Thomas, there, quacking with delight, was Dilly. Thomas was surprised. Hello there, he said. I thought you would be with Donald today. Dilly squawked a reply. Well, I hope you find him, said Thomas. I just saw him pass here a couple of moments ago. 
Dilly was delighted. She quacked her goodbyes and fluttered off to find Donald. If only she looked back when she heard the sound of a crate dropping on Thomas and hear him exclaim, Fwoo! What a pong! Dilly was delighted when she found Donald near the boats at the harbour. There you are, my little quackaroo, Donald beamed. I've been looking all over for you. Dilly flapped up to Donald and rested in the coal in his tender. And great news, Donald beamed. I just heard that Dougie's almost out of the wax. Shall we go and see him? Dilly squawked a happy reply. Come on then, chuckled Donald, and they set off to the workstation. As Donald puffed along with Dilly in his tender, he felt much better. Young Doc was right, Donald said to himself. All I needed was a change of scenery. And with that in mind, Donald and his duck headed home. But I call him a quacker. She makes me so happy with her little ways. So happy, that's true. Now everyone calls her Donald Stuck, but I call him a quacker. Good.